Good morning, everybody. Happy Friday. This is Corey from the Welcome Home team at Remax. We are live on this beautiful Friday, hot Friday, but it, we're, we're live Friday um, as usual with Jessica Bush from Tutor Doctor. We're going to be talking to her a little bit about school and the her business and, and what's in store for this coming year. Thanks for being with us, Jessica. Thanks for having me. Hi, everyone. Okay, so um, tell us a little bit about Tutor Doctor. What is your business? Tutor Doctor, I've had the business 10 years now. Okay and sustained through the pandemic, which is interesting. Yeah. Um, it's one-on-one, -on -one, very personalized, customized, flexible tutoring. So basically, I meet with every single family, every single student, I sit with the kids, and I really get to know them, and mm -hmm. not just their academic situation, but what they're into, Right. you know, their attributes, so that I can really match them with a tutor who can really connect with them, because especially right now connection and engagement is the most important thing well yeah we were kind of talking about that before the interview as far as that connection in the, the pandemic situation that was last year i mean even even my son as good as he is like he struggled with certain subjects because they're just not advantageous to go over like to a video online. right to go yeah. online it's a group-based learning activity so how did your business change did it increase no with, it didn't the... it didn't inc i'll tell you what happened was immediately when march when the pandemic hit I knew we have to transition fast. Um, I don't want to lose anybody. Uh, of course, some families said they wanted to pause mm -hmm. to see what was going on because there was just so much uncertainty. Sure. You know, but we transitioned to online right away. So we actually had a platform called Bramble, which is based out of the UK. That's kind of like an online school situation. Okay. A lot of my tutors, and they let us do it for free during the pandemic, which was really oh, nice. Oh, that's really nice of them. And we transitioned really quickly. And I have to tell you, the kids that stayed with us really made progress and they didn't they don't have any learning gaps that's great i mean that's the reality and you know people ask me when i talk to them how do you know when your kid needs a tutor well all i can tell you is don't wait till you start to see d's because mm -hmm. it's d's and f's i had a kid i call it the f zone i had a kid who had <laughs> three f's and do you know what it's going to take for us to pull him out of the F zone? That's got to be, yeah, because they I mean, always have a lot of bad behaviors or... or bad learn, habits. Bad habits. Bad habits. Yep. And I actually was just writing about that. You'll see it. I have an article I'm writing about how we have to change those habits now. Mm -hmm. Because not only the habit of not doing their work, the habit of logging in. And where do they log in when they're online? Where, are they tell me, my bed. Okay, so you're laying in bed. You log in, then what? I turn off my camera, then what? I go back to sleep. Right. They're not engaged with it at all because, I mean... They're not engaged. At, from a from a parental standpoint, I'm sure that you have this too. Like, you try to get your, your kids off of screens and away from TVs most of their life. Like, get out and do something and then you're telling them, hey, six hours a day, eight hours a day, you, you have, have to, to sit, sit in front of screen. a computer screen. Right, so I can tell you some tips if that happens again. Get them out of their bed. Get them out of their bed. <laughs> yeah. No, seriously. I, I, I completely agree. Get a space in the dining room, on the kitchen table, wherever it is, that's, that's where their homework and study space is. Mm -hmm. Get them out of their bedroom right. because that is such such a bad thing. Yeah. Well, it doesn't it, it, it doesn't breed better behaviors no. at all, and it doesn't keep them engaged in it. Like, and it's so an, easy for them thing. to pull up YouTube you know, so they've got YouTube going and they've got their school going. I mean, hopefully they're on some sort of Chromebook that blocks that. But if they're not, I see it all the time. Right. Well, at least most of New Jersey, I think, is going to go back to all in-person classes for now. Um, hopefully we won't go back into that lockdown situation again. Not. And I, I, I really hope not, too. Um, so you had kind of talked a little bit about some of the signs that parents can look for. What are, what are a couple of things that parents can, can look for so other, what I, what other, I other than the actual grades than yeah, themselves, yeah. you know, yeah. behaviorally? Um, well, this is going to be a really big transition, especially kids who thrived on online. Some kids thrived with, on online learning. They didn't have to deal with the bullying or the social situations that they, you know, some kids feel really uncomfortable, especially middle school, right. transitioning into high school. So. They're going to resist going back to school. In fact, I've dealt with a lot of kids that have school phobia, uh, fear of going back to school, school anxiety. Uh, I just say talk to your kids and be open. 
don't have any expectations in the beginning, just give them a safe space to be afraid, you know? Um, but be careful about your own fears as a parent because what you say, they hear every little word and they model every little thing that they feel that you're they're feeling. They're little sponges. They're just totally. taking and they'll feed so off of you your energy. So if you say, oh my God, I, well, even the, the mask mandate, which is, let's not get political, but the mask mandate. Oh my God, I'm so upset about the fact that you have to go back to school wearing a mask. What do you think your kid is going? Your kid is going to be resistant. You know, your kid absorbs everything that you say and feel. So try to be as open as you possibly can and don't have any expectations because I even have, have had parents that drive your kid up into school before it opens. Just drive up to the school, hang out a little while so that they get used to going back because they haven't gotten out of the house at seven o'clock in the morning for how long? Over a year? Yeah, I mean, some of the schools went, went back in person last year, but that was only co cohorts right. back and forth. It was never a full-time thing. And they were still used to having maybe a day or so where they stayed home. Yeah. So they're not used to getting up every morning at 6.30, 7 a.m. So start getting them ready. I mean, we start September 1, September 8th or 9th, both different schools. Start getting them ready now. Right. Get them up and out. Just even if they get up. Start to get them on a schedule. And get them on a schedule. Routine. And make a big calendar maybe in the kitchen, you know? Have a big family calendar where, okay, we got to get back on track, guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we have to get back on track. Otherwise, you're going to have a really, really difficult. And the other thing I talked about with the why, um, the North Jersey why, is um, what about meals? They're used to just coming into the kitchen and eating whatever, you know, or snacking on whatever. Um, talk about healthy snacks and healthy meals. Yeah. That's going to be a whole other thing. Yeah, well, that's going to be important as well. So the age range of, of kids that you work with, is it from all the way from? All ages. All ages. Yeah. Uh, probably the youngest we've had was four and a half. Okay. Uh, through college. All we the way just through got a, re uh, a request. We're actually beyond college. This is a girl that has been with us for years. We helped her get into nursing school. Now she's a nurse and she wants to go on. She realized that in her nursing program, she was, a, I think, an ER nurse. So she didn't get to deal with certain bedside manners that she needs to learn. Mm -hmm. And there's a whole program for that. And I actually have an amazing tutor who is helping her uh, take that class that she has to take to learn how to do assessments. Really? Okay. We have had the craziest requests. That the only one that I have had a real challenge getting a tutor for, believe it or not, is um, funeral directors have to take a, a test. Somebody came to you to help with the funeral director's test. Interesting. Yes. Okay. Because if there's if they're out there, I can try to find now. I tried really hard to, and you know, there are actually three schools in the metro area that that teach you that have that test mm -hmm. of course that those schools wanted this person to come to them sure you know what i'm saying right so that's part of my challenge is sometimes finding the right tutor uh sometimes it takes time to find the right match right but some of my tutors have been with me like eight nine years that's so right. Well, they have to love. It's all what, about the tutors. They have to love what they're doing and and educating educating people and, and passing it on, passing on that that knowledge. To be able Plus, to they're my team. You know, they're my front line. They're out there with the kids and the families. Um, we are back face to face with some. Mm -hmm. um, some parents and now are starting to ask for virtual again. I'm fine with that. Uh, we try to do whatever ever the family wants, but now we're in a big uncertain time again. So. Right. You know, um, so I ask, are, you know, are, are families vaccinated? Are tutors vaccinated? How does the family feel and how does the tutor feel? Because it's an individual situation. Yeah, well, that's, so. that's where you come in to be able to match them properly with who's going to work. So if somebody, if a parent is looking to use your services or a consultation, how do they get a hold of you? Where do they go? Where do they the go? best way is, well, my, there, we have a phone number, we have an email address, and we have a website, and I'm on all the social media platforms that <laughs> exist. Okay. <laughs> so the best way is probably to email me directly. Okay. Um, if you call, you'll get my care coordinator, and you can book right into my schedule. Okay, and I'll put all that contact information in the notes and the comments 
but oh, I come, sorry. I just, I come and I'm either, if you're in the local area around here, I'll come and I'll sit with you and I'll meet with you. That's great. Uh, otherwise, we'll do a Zoom consultation. But the most important thing is for me to sit and talk to the kids. That's the most important. Sure. To me. Well, you're doing some great work. Thank you so much for everything Thanks, that you've Corey. been doing to Thank help you. the kids and, and educating, keep people going in this really tough time that has been this past year and a half. Let's see how this year goes. Even if you guys have questions, I'm always there to help. Thank you. All right, guys, this has been Jessica Bush with uh, Tutor Doctor. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, we'll see you again next Friday. Uh, stay cool, and we'll see you soon. Thank you. Thanks, Corey.